Hey there, we're going to take a few minutes and talk about sampling. We know that sampling is um, a method by which we try to choose a subset from our larger population. And eventually we'll use that subset to, to make some inferences about our population. But what I want to discuss right now is what are some different techniques of choosing this sample and why some are more uh, preferable over others. So I want to continue on with our uh, example with the Maryland high school students and marijuana use, the one we started earlier in the chapter. So one way to choose a sample is to choose by using simple random sampling. And, and in this case, we insist that every possible sample of the size we plan to use has an equal chance of being selected. And again, the, the key word here in this type of sampling is everything has an equal chance of being chosen, um, or every student would have an equal chance of being chosen. Um, a real sort of primitive way of thinking about this is to think about names in a hat. When you place everyone's names in a hat, mix them up and select one, you feel comfortable knowing that everyone had an equal chance of being selected. Well, uh, a more modern way of doing that is to have a computer randomly generate, in this case, our 1,100 students' names from the approximately 255 Maryland public high school students. So you just take a computer, there's lots of, of, of ways for it to generate a list. Of course, this list would be much longer uh, with 1,100 names in it. And that's an example of simple random sampling. Another way to sample is called stratified sampling. So sometimes we'll take the population and divide it into what's called a homogeneous group or groups with similar characteristics. And we call these groups strata. And um, then once the groups are um, selected, then we perform a sim simple random sample within each stratum or group before the results are then combined together. Well, that's a mouthful. So let me give you an example. Now, to ensure equal representation from each grade, we would divide the students by grade and then randomly select 275 students from each group. So if we were uh, cautious or concerned that maybe we might get a sample with too, too many younger students or too many older students, and that might affect whether or not it was representative of, all, of the entire population, then we would make an effort to group students by what year they were in school and then select 275 students in a random fashion from each of these groups and combine them together. This is called stratified sampling. Another type of sampling technique is called systematic sampling. And we draw the sample by selecting individuals systematically. Now what that is, is if we would select every kth person. Now, kth seems a little abstract, so we put that there because we could say every eighth person, every ninth um, machine that comes off of a uh, or comes off of an assembly line, and so forth. So this k here is just to represent a value that we decide is a good um, number, and use it to um, select um, individuals or things. Um, and if there's no reason to believe that the, the order of the list could somehow be associated um, with, uh, with uh, not giving us a representative sample, then this is a, a reasonable way um, to sample. So an example here would be we would randomly select a starting point on our list and then choose every fifth student from the list. And as you can see here, every fifth person, you can see I have a check mark under them, indicating they would be chosen for the sample. Now, in our case, you know, we have 255,000 um, students. It was a little hard to represent all of them here. Uh, we would choose every 231st student from a grand list of the 255,000 students. And those every 231st student on the list would then be put into our sample. Another type of sampling technique is cluster sampling. Um, cluster sampling is a, a more practical way of sampling. Sometimes random sampling is uh, a bit difficult um, because of just the, the pure logistics of it. So um, 
and, and actually um, finding the individuals on the list. So what we do here is we, we divide the population into clusters and then we randomly select a few clusters and then perform a census within each of them. That is we would then use every individual or every item within the cluster. Here's what I mean. The trouble with our prior methods with the Maryland High School um, and marijuana use example is that if I grant generated this 1100 students in a simple random sample I may have students from all over the state and I would have to have my people working for me crisscrossing the state in order to find these students to survey them. So a more practical thing would involve cluster sampling which would be we would consider all the high schools in Maryland now granted there are more than what I've depicted here but this is just a nice picture to show what I mean and so if they were all here each of these schools is considered a cluster and then I would randomly select as you can see here one two three four high schools and then I would attempt to survey every single high or student within these high schools about their marijuana use this would definitely be more practical in a sense that I would have to people go to this school, this school, the third school, and the fourth school in order to collect the data instead of having them go to possibly almost every one of the schools just to seek out only a few students. So this is an example of cluster sampling. Our final sampling technique which um, is, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily called a technique, but a style of sampling is to use what's called a convenience sampling. And I think the name says it all here. It's just um, a type of sampling that's used because of the convenient nature of the data or the accessibility of the data. So um, the most obvious criticism of this type of sampling is often it's not representative of the entire population. So let's suppose that our researcher with this question about marijuana use in high school students is friends with two principals in Baltimore City. And basically he'll use the students from their schools to answer the survey. It's very convenient for the researcher, but I don't really think that these two high schools in Baltimore City would be very representative of the entire state of Maryland. 